Praise the Lord. We, we thank God for today. And Amen. Commit this message into His hands. Commit to the Lord every do and your plans will succeed, the scripture says. What we have here today, we're going to share with you is uh, Victory. Our name of our fellowship is Victory is Jesus Fellowship. Amen. And what we want to do is share a simple summary with you of what we believe and teach at Victory is Jesus Amen. Fellowship. All right. And we have nine core beliefs. We have nine core beliefs. Now, I'll tell you what, this is very, very edifying, encouraging, and uplifting for the child of God by the grace of God. Number one, we, uh, we believe that the Bible, as given in the Old and New Testaments, is the inspired and inerrant Word of God. Amen. Thanks be to God for His Word from Genesis through Revelation. Uh, the Apostle Paul explains this in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. He says, all scripture is breathed out by God. Literally, all scripture, all scripture is God-breathed and is profitable, good for teaching, for reproof. Another word for reproof is rebuking, for correction, and for training or instructing in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be what? Complete. Equipped for every good work. That's why Brother Eddie shared last Sunday, what are we to do as believers in Christ? Preach the word. Amen. Be prepared. Be ready. Preach the word in season, out of season to correct, rebuke, and encourage your great patience and careful instruction. Preach the word. Thank God for his word. Number two, we believe in the triune God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Hebrew, Abba, Ben, Rakakorash. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Apostle Paul tells us this in 2 Corinthians Chapter 13, the very last verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. I love this verse. This is a uh, Trinitarian benediction. Paul writes to the church, he says, The grace or the favor of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God that is God the Father and the fellowship or the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. So this is a Trinitarian benediction. Reminded the Corinthian Christians of the blessings that they had received, grace from the Lord Jesus Christ, love from God the Father, and fellowship with God and one another through the Holy Spirit. Now this is very interesting. Jesus, Yeshua, Jesus was mentioned before the Father. Why? Because his sacrificial death is the ultimate expression of God's love. The triunity of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now it's from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. Number three, we believe in the deity, the deity of Jesus, Yeshua, the deity of Jesus. He is the Word became flesh in John 1, 14. He is God manifest in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3, 16. We believe in the deity, virgin birth, substitutionary death, bodily resurrection, and imminent return of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do I get a witness? Amen. That's exciting, isn't it? What is the good news? What is the gospel? What is the good news about Christ? Well, the Apostle Paul gives us that answer. And as it is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, the good news about Christ, the euangelion, the glad tidings, the gospel. Paul writes what the good news about Christ is. He says, now I would remind you, brothers, fellow believers, of the gospel, the good news that I preached to you, which you received, and which you stand, and by which you are being saved, Paul said, if you hold fast or firmly. So think about it. True believers hold fast to the gospel. They hold fast to the good news about Christ. Paul says, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believe in vain. Amen. Paul said, For I delivered to you as of first or greatest importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. Amen. The good news about Christ, and He says, I'm, uh, he says, I'm alive forevermore, and He says, I will come again. Amen. Praise the Lord. That was number three. Number four, we believe that salvation is solely by grace apart from works. Amen. Let me say it again. We believe that salvation is solely by grace apart from works. 
as explained by Paul in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Paul writes to the church by the Holy Spirit. He says, For by grace, charis, God's undeserved, unmerited favor, you have been saved how? Through faith. So by grace, through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Amen. Praise the Lord. So God's grace is preeminent in every aspect of salvation. Hallelujah. You say, okay, then where does works come in at? Well, I'm glad you asked. The next verse gives the answer. Mm -hmm. For we as believers are his work of art, workmanship, uh, masterpiece. We've been created in Christ Jesus. When somebody's born again, he says, you are a new creation in Christ. The old has passed away, the new has come. Created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works, which God himself prepared beforehand or before ordained that we as believers should walk in them. Amen. Amen. What does that simply mean this? It's not salvation by works, but it's salvation that works. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is not salvation by works, but it's salvation that works. Turn over a couple pages to a Romans. Romans 11, verses 5 and 6. Romans. The book of Romans, chapter 11, verses 5 and 6. We believe again that salvation is solely by grace apart from works. Paul writes by the Holy Spirit to the church. He says, so too at the present time there is a remnant chosen by grace. Don't you love those three words? Chosen by grace. Amen. Now if that's true, and it is, and if it is by grace... It is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. Amen. Notice, again, there's two, three words. Chosen by grace, which means God did not choose this remnant because of its foreseen faith or good works or spiritual worthiness or racial descent, but solely because of His grace. Amen. amen. And amen. That's why every true born-again believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, can say, it's but by the grace of God, I am what I am. From 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. Praise the Lord. I hope you're getting edified today amen. from the word of truth. Number five, again, our nine core beliefs at Victory is Jesus Fellowship, a simple summary. Number five, we believe in divine election. Mm. That is that God chose and elected his people to salvation when the Bible teaches before the creation of the world. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me give you a passage on that. There are so many, but I'm just going to give you this one from Ephesians chapter 1. I love Ephesians. It's the word on steroids. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. Again, we at Victory is Jesus believe in divine election that God chose and elected his people to salvation when? Before the creation of the world. Praise the Lord. Here it is. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. Blessed, happy, uh, praise, praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has, past tense, blessed us in Christ with what? Every spiritual, not material, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Remember the church divided Christ, were pilgrims passing through, were aliens and strangers, sojourners, exiles, pilgrims. Our citizenship is where? Is in heaven, Philippians 3.20. A heavenly calling, heavenward in Christ Jesus. In the heavenly places, even as he, God the Father, chose us, in him Christ, before the foundation of the world, that we as believers should be holy, not because we were holy, set apart and blameless before him. God did this in love. None of us deserved it. He, God, predestined us for adoption to himself as sons one way through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his or good pleasure of his, God the Father's will. Amen. The result all being to the praise of God, his glorious grace, God's glorious grace, with which he, God, has blessed us in the beloved. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't that exciting? Praise the Lord. Blessed us in the beloved, accepted in the beloved, in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. That's why we're commanded to be strong in the grace that is in and only in Christ Jesus. Amen. Who's getting excited? You're getting better than a seminary education in less than 20 minutes today. I'm talking anywhere on this planet. You're getting better than a seminary education in less than 20 minutes today. That's, that's shouting ground. Praise Amen. the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Number six, we believe in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ 
For what? For their forgiveness. Another word for forgiveness is remission of sins. Hallelujah. Again, we believe, number six, in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission or the forgiveness of sins, and that salvation is in Him, Christ alone. Amen. And we learn that from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. You see how it's going to write in order here? Ephesians 1, 7, in Him, Christ, we as believers, have redemption. How? Through His blood, the precious blood of Christ, the Lamb of God, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His God's grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Notice, we have redemption through His blood. The term used here relates to paying the required ransom to God. He paid our sin debt of His people in full to tell us day, to tell us die. It is finished. To, for the release of a, of a person, it speaks of for the release of a person from bondage, Jesus Christ sacrificed on the cross, paid that price for every elect person enslaved by sin, buying them out of the slave market of iniquity. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Do I get a witness? Amen. amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Whew, this is exciting and fun. It's simple, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There's no confusion here whatsoever. The simplicity that is in Christ. Christ himself said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light, his commands are not burdensome. Amen. Amen. Number you. seven, we believe in the eternal security of the believer. Uh-oh. Amen. There we this go. is the Christian's greatest discovery right here. This is the Christian's greatest discovery. The believer in Christ, the believer, we believe in the eternal security of the believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Christian's greatest discovery. Let me give you the awesome passage on that. This is the Lord Jesus the Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, who is the resurrection and the life, who is the light, the light of the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. John chapter 10, verses 27 through 29. Again, we believe in the eternal security of the believer. Uh-oh. This is so edifying. This is so encouraging for the child of God. The Lord Jesus who is, again, the way, the truth, and the life. He said, my sheep, notice he didn't say my goats. Mm -hmm. Hello. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and as his people hear his word, and the Lord says, and I know them, and they follow me. Well, who does the Lord know? The Lord knows those who are his. Amen. The Lord says, I know those I have chosen, John 13, 18. Amen. The Lord knows those who are his. I know them, and they follow me. That is, true believers follow Christ Jesus. Now look at verse 28. This is awesome. The Lord Jesus said, I give them. He didn't say I offer them. Huge difference. The Lord himself, who is God in the flesh, said, I give them. He didn't say I offer them. Hello. Who's getting their world rocked? Who's getting their socks blessed off? Amen. Amen. He says, I give them eternal life and they will, not may, they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Now, 29, I think, is one of the most powerful verses in the entire Holy Writ. Right here, verse 29. The Lord Jesus said, My Father, Abba, Father, Papa, Daddy, my Father who has past tense given him to me is greater than all. And watch this. And no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. Amen. Now, think about that, beloved, and you get your world rock. Who's included in that no one? No one means no one, by the Amen. way. Amen. Satan's included in that no one. Demons are included in that no one. False teachers are included in that no one. Guess who else is included in that no one? You are. Amen. I hope you just got your world rocked. You're included in that no one too. And by the way, I got good news for you. The sovereign Lord God Almighty doesn't lose, never has, never will. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Amen. We preach uh, the triumph, the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The commentary teaches us this clearly indicates that God has chosen his sheep, and it is they who believe and follow Christ Jesus. The Lord Jesus, his sheep, are secure because he is the good shepherd and the great shepherd and the chief shepherd who has the power to keep them safe. Verse 29 makes abundantly powerfully clear that the Father ultimately stands behind the sheep's security for no one, again, no one is able to steal from God the living and true God, the God of Scripture, who is in sovereign control of all things. Amen. He is seated on the throne. He's sovereign. He's large and in charge. And he's in full control. Praise the Lord. Amen. And he doesn't lose. 
Praise the Lord. He is El El Yon in Hebrew. He is God Most High, and there's no high like the Most High God. Amen? Amen. He is El El Yon, the Most High God. He is in sovereign control of all things. He's in control of your next breath. The Bible says in God we live and move and have our being. Amen. So we learn from this passage that no stronger passage in the Old Testament or New Testament exists for the absolute eternal security of every true Christian. Amen. Amen. By the grace of God. And, and may, I, may I remind you what the Lord Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 16. The Lord Jesus said, Ye, I'm quoting from the King James Version, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained or appointed you. Amen. That's from John chapter 15, verse 16. Amen. Woo! Praise the Lord. This is exciting, isn't it? Let's look at number eight. That was fun. <laughs> you can write a book on that subject alone. Number eight. We believe that the true church, the ecclesia, the called out ones of God, that is the body of Christ, is composed of all born again believers in Christ Jesus of this present dispensation. Currently, as Paul said in Ephesians 3, 2, we are in the dispensation of the grace of God. It's also called the church age. We are in the dispensation of the grace of God, the church age, Right now, present tense, between the first and second comings of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And uh, this is explained in detail by the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 3. May I encourage you, we, we've got a study at Victory of Jesus Fellowship. We did a sermon not too long ago, uh, What is the True Church? May I encourage you to check that message out, What is the True Church? I believe you'll be abundantly, richly edified in the Word of Christ mm -hmm. by that message. What is the true church? Again, you can look up Victory is Jesus Fellowship. You can look up Edward Messman, uh, Lisa Hoffman, Robert Hoffman, uh, uh, was it Kwame, Kwame Hoffman. You can look it up, and I'll tell you what, you will get your world rocked. I'll tell you what, you will get blessed. Praise the Lord. So that was number eight. Number nine. Our core beliefs, a simple summary of what we believe and teach at Victory is Jesus Fellowship. Thanks be to God, He gives us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is number nine. Uh, Louis, you might want to put that seatbelt on. <laughs> you want to fasten that seatbelt. We, at Victory is Jesus, we believe in the rapture, that is the catching up of believers in Christ, which is our blessed, literally our happy hope, as taught in Titus chapter 2, verse 13, it's also taught in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Now this is a critically important prior to, did you hear me, beloved? Prior to the seven-year tribulation period and premillennial return of the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, to fulfill the prophecies. Now let me let me emphasize this very boldly about a literal earthly kingdom. Amen. Again, let me emphasize that word very boldly about a literal earthly kingdom and about Israel's future regeneration and restoration as a nation. Mm -hmm. Let the word of God speak for itself as it is written literally from Genesis chapter 1 through Revelation 22. The very first verse of the Bible says, In the beginning, Elohim, God, created the heavens and the earth. Amen? Amen. It wasn't by luck or chance or an accident. It wasn't evolution. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He is, he is our faithful creator. He's the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So, this is taught, past, present, future, we share with you the, our nine, nine core beliefs. This is taught in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. And know this, beloved, God is not finished with His chosen nation, Israel. Amen. And know this, it's taught from Genesis through Revelation, God is faithful. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness. God is faithful. God bless you. And dear friends, beloved, I pray for you. And I, I, I pray that the Lord keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord has turned his face towards you and give you a shalom peace. And I hope, God bless you, and I hope that helped. Amen. Amen. You all have a great day.